major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits. Welcome to this edition of Able to Learn Air, the one and only program that in Vermont and beyond focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Silent. I'm Arlene Silent. And welcome to the show. Before we introduce our guest, and, uh, Mayor Ann Watts, <coughs> Mayor Ann Watson of Montpelier, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and Ala Israel. Um, welcome again yes, to thank you. Able and On Air. And um, uh, what's new in city council happenings and people with special needs? Sure. Well, so um, this isn't exactly uh, the same thing as uh, addressing people, uh, folks, or the needs uh, of, of some folks or people with special needs. Um, but we did um, just uh, at the last city council meeting um, have a, a discussion about um, some of the, the um, needs of the homeless so uh, or people who are experiencing homelessness so uh, a couple of meetings ago uh, we ended up forming a homelessness task force where we could um, mm -hmm. see if there were any short-term things that the council could be doing to address uh, some of the the most immediate needs um, we know it's getting colder and so <coughs> um, trying to think through like what what you know might be useful and doable um, I mean, there's a lot of great um, support services that are out there the currently shelter. Yep, doing great work and uh, so grateful for uh, all of the stuff that they do, but also trying to think through, okay, so how can the city um, play a role and is there any, are there any gaps that the city could be filling? Talk, talking about the gaps about the city mm -hmm. filling, um, you know, being, um, there's a difference between homelessness and displacement, mm -hmm. but you know, if you're special needs and homeless, there's, it's a double-edged sword there. Yeah. So your comments on that? Sure. Well, uh, I mean, if, if someone has a particularly special needs and they find themselves needing to move or to lose where, they're, where they live, uh, they just have li more limited options, uh, potentially, as to, like, where they can go. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, being able to um, provide... Uh, you know, satisfactory options for those um, with different needs uh, is pretty pretty important, and make sure that we're keeping that in mind. In as well. terms of the homelessness task force, um, WCAX interviewed me, uh, you know, that night in the street, you know, while you were meeting with the city council. Um, businesses were complaining mm -hmm. that, or voicing their opinion, and that people that are homeless. Um, are causing a ruckus, quote unquote. Uh, well, I wouldn't say ruckus, but causing a problem being, you know, in the street, um, bothering their businesses. When homeless people are part of Montpelier mm -hmm. as citizens, so your take on that particular thing? Sure. Well, I mean, I think I would just want to be clear that some yeah, of the um, yeah, let's lay it on the table and yeah, sure. Well, that some of the folks who um, the businesses were complaining about are not necessarily homeless. Um, they, uh, for whatever reason, are uh, choosing to do that with their time, and um, some of them may be homeless, uh, but that's, uh, I think it's probably not quite accurate to say that it's just uh, a homeless population that um, was also bothering um, some of these stores. Uh, loitering, that's the Yeah, word. right. It, there's, a, there's a loitering aspect to it. Um, and there's, um, I, I think, um, you know, there was also some um, occurrences of, uh, I'm not sure I've got the right phrase for it, but it's something like um, just disturbing the peace, um, mm -hmm. that kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, behavior. And so that's a separate problem. Um, and that's, that's Can not... Can a homeless person in the city of Montpelier get arrested for doing something wrong in front of a business or... Well, I mean, that, only just the same as someone might be arrested um, if they're not in front of a business, but for disturbing the peace, let's say. But um, and there, uh, you know, there 
there can there is the possibility of someone um, getting a no trespass um, kind of order. But if it's the city's right of way, then mm -hmm. then it's the city's right of way, and people are allowed to to, to be there. Okay. Um, so just to be clear, we do not have a no loitering um, ordinance uh, mm -hmm. in Montpelier, nor do we have any ban on panhandling, and that's those are perfectly legal protected. Um, activities mm -hmm. so and and so actually that was one of the reasons that we formed the homelessness um, uh, task force was to bring businesses um, together with people who were um, uh, you know in tune with the the needs of uh, the homeless population mm -hmm. and see if there was some way to um, to uh, meet everybody's needs you know because if if um, businesses are losing customers uh, because the customers are afraid to go into the building or whatnot, then that doesn't work either. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now let's change topic. Um, ADA compliance and um, it, I understand that the, and of course we'll show some footage while we're talking. Um, the new, well, it's not a new art gallery, but the art gallery in Montpelier. Yes. Um, down the block from here, uh, just opened up the new elevator. Yes. Um, so can we talk about the ADA sure. compliance? Why did it take so long? Uh, and I mean, if you want to mention. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the T.W. Wood Gallery, which is on Berry Street, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, a really wonderful uh, gallery. Uh, and actually, to be fair, so the T.W. Wood Gallery is in a building called the Center for Arts and Learning. Um, which houses um, a few nonprofits. So T.W. Wood Gallery is one of them. Um, there's also the River Rock School as well as the Monteverdi Mu Music School. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there might be one other that I'm leaving out right now, but um, they ended up uh, just, oh, like you were saying, they just um, put in an elevator because um, previously there was no elevator to the second um, floor, which is where uh, the Monteverdi Music School is, as well as the T.W. Wood Gallery. Mm. So, um, is it because of a grandfather clause in the building that it was hard to get an elevator? Well, it would be a, a historic structure. I'm pretty sure that building itself actually used to be a convent um, where the really? nuns lived. Wow. Yeah. Um, to, Which nuns to where? Well, I think they were in association with Saint um, uh, Saint Augustine. Um, St. Augustine, um, that's next door. Uh, but then um, I think there was also an affiliation with the St. Michael's School um, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. also uh, sort of mm -hmm. right, right there. Yeah. Uh, but then, so there were a number of reasons why it took a long time. Um, if you don't mind me asking. No, those. no, fair enough. I mean, my understanding is that um, there were at least a couple of challenges. One is that putting in an elevator is, it's very expensive. Um, exactly, so, And yeah. these are all very small nonprofits um, with other obligations in terms of, um, you know, paying for that, just being in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were able to raise uh, an incredible amount of money to uh, to actually just get get that ball mm -hmm. even rolling. So it took some some years of, of fundraising and, pl and planning. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then the, the second reason was because it's not an easy building to um, figure out where the elevator ought to go. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, were, I, you were there at the opening. Mm -hmm. um, it's right in what the middle. Mean, what do you mean where the elevator ought to go? Is, was there yeah, it's often easier to add an elevator to the outside of a building um, if you're doing it in a, like a retro um, fit kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But this, but for whatever reason, that didn't make much sense. Uh, and so this elevator is right in the center of the building. And uh. so uh, that actually, I, I can't say this for sure, but I can imagine that that probably made it more expensive as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so there's there was just a lot um, of planning uh, in terms of the logistics and they could have uh, just easier they could have just easier have put because uh, I've I've been in places before where they've had wheelchair lifts mm -hmm. you know and you have a door that closes and you push a button and it, the wheelchair goes up it's like an elevator type of thing but they wanted it enclosed I guess sure uh, that would have worked for some of it I think but uh, there were 
at least on the second floor, there's actually multiple levels that are just offset from mm -hmm. each other. So not only would you need to bring people up to one floor, but mm -hmm. you have to also be able to bring them up like a half, <laughs> you know, a couple feet more mm -hmm. um, to the other to the other side. So again, old buildings, especially that have additions, uh, just get really complicated. Did wow. you want to ask questions? Hmm? Want to ask questions? Go ahead. When are they going to fix the cracks? The cracks in the sidewalk? Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of cracks. It's supposed to be infrastructure. Yeah. Like so I understand to, to, uh, there's <laughs> new people in power now. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, well, not in power, but helping the city of Montpelier. How is that going to... Sure. So just to um, help clarify that, so our um, d uh, Department of Public Works head has... Uh, <clears throat> sort of semi-retired. He's no longer the um, department head. And Donald so we have Barlow. a new department head, uh, mm. Donna Barlow Casey. Uh, and so she is still just getting her feet wet in all of that. But, uh, but well, to be fair, she's also um, been active as an, um, I, uh, I think she's, She's worked for the city of Montpelier before, and I think she has experience in uh, public works departments. So mm -hmm. um, not not wholly new to her, but... Uh, Does it all have to do with money, or is there other ways around it? Because it's ADA, that needs to be ADA compliant. Yeah, so it's it's a couple of things. One is money, for sure, but the other... I hope you're not upset about the questions. No, 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 not... Uh, it's a very valid question. Um, but the other, the other factor is... Um, uh, well, there's, I can think of at least two other factors. One um, being that at this point, it's sort of a race against the clock um, f to get work done um, before, before winter, winter, right? Yeah. So, and that actually affects the other reason, which is um, the the list of priorities of of jobs to be done um, again before the winter sets in. Um, Does it have to do in terms of the? The cracks in the sidewalk. Does it have to do with the insulation problem, or is there? Do you any mean insulation? why do they occur? Yeah, within a city is within a city's infrastructure. Yeah. yeah, does it have to do with the the materials being used, or is it that causes the cracks, or is it just weathering itself? So it's um, a little bit of both, just from the way you asked it, but uh, the. The reason, the real reason is um, because of freeze-thaw cycles. Mm -hmm. So if water can um, infiltrate either into a, an existing crack or even underneath, um, you know, if it's getting in from the sides, you know, underneath the sidewalk um, from a, an adjacent green um, space, mm -hmm. um, then that, if that water goes through a freeze-thaw cycle, then it will um, expand and contract and the, the rigid, um, and brittle material um, can't can't take that, and so it cracks, mm -hmm. which ends up exacerbating it the next time because um, more mm -hmm. water can get into that crack the next time around, and again go through a freeze thaw cycle and break it up more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a constant battle, actually. Because the um, snow, the snow and ice eats away the cement. Yeah. Um, it's away. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's um, it's it. That causes it to um, to to break up. Okay, let's yeah. talk about the environment more. I understand Montpelier had a huge event with the electric cars. Or oh that? yeah. And how does the environment play into? Because um, I don't know her last name. Uh, she's uh, been in national with Greta. Uh, oh, uh, Thunberg. Thunberg. Yeah. Yeah, and. How, as far as the electric cars for Montpelier, but how, in terms of people with special needs and the environment, how would it play into um, that or anything that's happening in Montpelier? Sure. Well, uh, so one of the things uh, that comes to mind anyway is uh, as GMTA is uh, expanding or changing their their services, um, I actually. Uh, a little bit, a little while ago, uh, wrote a letter of support for them to get an electric bus, mm -hmm. um, which I think would be a They've great They've got new move. buses, by the way, now. Oh, do they now? I hadn't yeah. seen them. So maybe they're out there. I'm not sure. They're nice. Yeah. They've got <laughs> That's new great. buses, yeah. Um, do, are any of them electric, perhaps? perhaps <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I didn't oh, look, okay. but yeah. Yeah, well, so that, of course, is the hope. Um, I mean, as people start to transition away from gasoline, diesel-powered 
vehicles, I mean, electricity or electric cars are going to be the new the new norm. You still got to stop through the station and plug it in. This is true. So it takes yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of planning, and it's a little bit of a I different system. I've seen them system. in New York. Yeah, they had them in New York. They, <coughs> they plug them into the into the thing. Yeah. Yeah. If well, I've charged. even heard that you know at some point in the future, uh, there may be systems which can wirelessly charge the cars, mm -hmm. which would be very cool. Um, yeah. Just for example. Um, uh, I don't know if you've seen the technology where you can charge a cell phone just from like placing yeah. it on a stand. You don't have to plug it in at all. They have a new device now, as far as the environment, for a blind person mm -hmm. using a cane. It's a smart cane. It acts with your phone. So it's like a GPS. Oh, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like a GPS. Uh -huh. So, you know, if you, need, if you need directions to get somewhere, the cane can point you in that direction. Yeah, so cool. as far as the environment, yeah. Well, sure, that makes so much sense with like the 5G sort of network with the Internet of Things where, yeah. you know, um, uh, the example I've heard is that like your toothbrush could talk to you, you know, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> then why not a cane? I mean, that makes so yeah, much sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be so helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So but, anyway, one hopes. But, but with the um, environment, people with special needs, like, because um, Vermont has so much greenery. Yeah. So how, how how is that changing? You know, with with new things happening in Vermont. Well, so did you have something in mind, <clears throat> particularly? Or? No, like okay, in, environmental. Uh, how can I word this? Uh, okay, uh, you had the event with the electric cars, but yes. how how um, in terms of special needs, like. Um, are, are, in your opinion, are people with special needs affected by environment when it comes to their own challenges or? Oh, sure. No, I mean, um, we know that particularly people. Um, uh, That's that, the way I wanted to word it, yeah. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Or folks that are um, typically minorities um, and whether that, you know, is, includes uh, uh, disability or not. Uh, are often that is the population that is most affected by pollution mm -hmm. uh, and just uh, other like environmental injustices, uh, and so blood poisoning, etc. Sure, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all kinds of um, you know, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to the upgrading of of homes um, and weatherization. You know, if if someone um, you know needs to be able to live in a certain um, uh, accessibility of scale home, mm -hmm. um, it's really important that, that those homes are weatherized, for example, mm. um, and have proper ventilation um, along with them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, that's, at least that's one thing that, that comes to mind mm -hmm. for sure. Mm. Um, There's actually one other thing I want to, if, yeah, if I go may. Ahead, go ahead. Um, one of the other factors in terms of the environment, you know, as we move to towards a, a more sustainable future. Um, for Vermonters, roughly a third of the um, energy that the, the average Vermonter uh, expends is in transportation. Uh, and so the How more- so? Well, because a lot of Vermonters just live way out in, you know, in the country, and so they end up having to drive a half yeah, an hour yeah, uh -huh. to anywhere, um, to, to yeah. anything. Some Vermonters probably don't mm -hmm. have I'm, uh, I haven't experienced it, but mm -hmm. some Vermonters probably don't, in, in rural Vermont, probably don't have a grocery store, uh, or they have a little mom and pop store. And sure. They don't or if they want to get to a grocery store, it's 30 or 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for sure. And so um, we know that places that are more sustainable, just in, in general, are going to be um, places that are more highly uh, densely populated, yeah. um, mm -hmm. which, uh, as far as I understand, is actually going to be make it easier for um, those with the d disabilities to get around, you know, whether it's living in town and being able to um, walk or, you know, be able to take their wheelchair uh, around town to the places where they need to go, or whether that's even having a high enough density population so to, to make public transit or mass transit a viable option. Um, so that's... That's something I certainly have been thinking a lot about lately. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the new uh, Down Street um, building yeah. that's happening, along with the bus depot. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit? Uh, you know, accessible housing. I understand thirty units. Yes. And then, 
Yeah, so the bus depot. Right, so the the bus depot uh, will be on the, the first floor, and then there's three levels of, uh, um, I think it's mixed uh, income um, and affordable housing uh, above that, uh, which is very exciting. It's great to see more that. housing is popping up because oh, you have yeah. the, the the French block took a while, and then you know yeah. you have this, and it, it, it's just so encouraging to see all the new housing um, going into Montpelier. It's really great. Do you think? No, I understand that they're trying to get rid of homelessness. Was in 2020. You think it, that's the, the 30 units is a step in the right direction? Oh, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Is that going to solve homelessness? Certainly not. No. Um, in fact, I mean, I think that is going to take some pretty significant system shifts. Uh, system. Shift? Shifts, yeah, just changes in the changes in uh, in at in many at many levels uh, uh, of our system to help um, end homelessness, mm -hmm. uh, and in part that I mean my my understanding of that is that that's going to involve um, shifts to the minimum wage, to the healthcare system, uh, mm -hmm. to supports for. Um, mental health for um, other kinds of disabilities uh, and so I mean it's going to take a lot but uh, but having more housing available uh, I think is going to be good and will probably increase the density uh, in Montpelier which is a, a good thing. Okay let's talk about uh, your mental health services. Sure. Um, I understand that back in the summer there was an incident that happened yeah. in Montpelier with Mark Johnson. Yeah. Um, and we did a couple of shows to um, about gun violence um, to kind of um, educate people. Yeah. Um, Thank you for doing that. Uh, by the way. Uh, 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 you're most welcome. Uh, what is the um, status on how police officers in Montpelier? And neighboring towns, how are they working to um, educate um, more people with mental health um, situations and working with the uh, police? I mean, if that's the 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 right wording of the question. Sure. So uh, the Montpelier police do go through um, mental health training. Mm -hmm. um, now, to be fair. Uh, that investigation is ongoing, still ongoing. Um, and it's, so it's still open um, mm -hmm. and so I'm hopeful that it will um, wrap up soon so I other and actually once it's wrapped up uh, we're planning on having a, a, some time during a city council meeting specifically to address this I mean we had actually talked about because um, uh, I know uh, I'm sorry it's okay. I, I know that disability rights Vermont just Disability Rights Vermont just um, started a, a memorial fund yeah. on behalf of mm -hmm. Mark Johnson. Yeah, so, which I think is, which, which is wonderful. And yeah. actually someone came to a council meeting the other day to, um, to talk about that, uh, which was really moving. Um, it, was really, it was a lovely um, uh, mm -hmm. talk that the, the gentleman gave. Is it, so do you think there should be more training with police officers or, or yeah. more non-violent ways to work with people with mental illness or? So I think there's always room for improvement just in general. Um, but I'm going to say specifically, let's talk about that more once that report comes out because right. then yes, I think we can really get into yeah, yeah. some of the details yes, of what happened and um, if there was a breakdown of anything, you know, we can identify it and then um, think through like what, um, what sure, could have happened sure. differently? Mm -hmm. um, so let's, yeah. But let's, let's. Uh, if you don't mind my taking a rain check on that. No but problem. having said that, I think there are always ways to be better and to improve. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, anything new other than what you've spoken about that you would like to mention? Oh sure. Well, uh, so. Uh, you, you mentioned the transit center yes. is going to be opening uh, pretty soon, uh, and then and the the housing as well. Very exciting. Uh, but then the um, the other thing that I think is worth mentioning is that the shared use path that uh, will go across town. Uh, the, the a major portion of it is is about to um, be officially opened as well. Uh, That's so we, the bike path. Yes. Is yes. that the, the, is the bike path has the bike path taken? Because I remember there used to be a um, Montpelier beverage yes. place. Yes. Yep. Um, has that taken over that particular space? Uh, the bike path. Yeah. 
Um, yes. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a couple of things that are going on with that space. Um, so, part of that lot will be used for uh, the for the bike path. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're sort of, uh, there's no work happening that right there at this very moment um, because we're waiting to do some environmental testing. Uh, and, what and do you mean by environmental testing? Oh, they're looking for contaminants in the ground. Mm -hmm. And then um, once we know that, we'll be able to um, move forward. Anyway, uh, but just next to where the shared use path uh, will um, come through will be the road that is like the access road to behind like the drawing board and Shaw's. Oh. Uh, not Shaw's, I'm sorry. Uh, the drawing board and uh, Aubuchon's. Oh, yeah. yeah. To get, to get to its parking lot. Yep. And so, uh, and then the the, uh, the space that used to be a parking lot um, right next to the beverage center mm -hmm. uh, building, um, that we're just going to seed over with grass. Uh, for now. So there'll be no more beverage center planning, uh, I guess, or well, planned? Well, so we had, <clears throat> um, we're actually still in the process of looking for a place that could be a beverage redemption center. Um, because the only one now is in Barry. They, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's terribly inconvenient um, <laughs> I, for me. I mean, I have to drive my bottles to Barry. That's not, I mean, I would prefer to just have it be right at the corner of Barry. Yeah, my husband takes it back to but, Shaw's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can take them to Shaw's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, there's, a, there's a, quite a few reasons as to why um, we haven't been able to find a, a new place for it yet, but we're, but we're still actively looking. Um, and my understanding is that it's easiest or it's easier um, to have uh, beverage redemption um, incorporated into another existing mm -hmm. um, business. Okay. So it's still it's still ongoing, um, and actually we're going to get a new um, uh, executive director for the Montpelier Development Corporation mm. um, starting in November. Wow! And so I hope to Our put that on. Our next guest. Yeah, you should definitely yeah. have her on. She's great. Her name is Lisa Maxwell, and uh, she's going to be starting in November. So okay. Uh -huh. uh, let's, on her radar. Uh, let's talk about traffic lights for a minute. Sure. Um, I understand that certain traffic lights in Montpelier, when you push them, they speak. Yep. Uh, you know, for the blind or people that can't <laughs> hear well. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one uh, traffic light by the end where Shores is, that uh, if you know what I'm talking about, it's a yellow looking pole and you push it. And it, it flashes. It flashes. Yep. Are there, is there anything within the city's budget about putting more of those? Because I think it would help, um, I myself deal with a visual impairment, mm -hmm. so it would help people with visual impairments to yeah. have more. Yeah, fair. So. That was funded through uh, the Montpelier Transportation Infrastructure Committee. Yes. And so they have a certain budget that they allocate um, every year. And they're also trying to, um, they work in coordination with something called the Complete Streets Plan. Yes. Uh, and so I would um, have to look at the Complete Streets Plan or talk to the Transportation Infrastructure uh, committee to, uh, or actually, there's a there's also a committee for the complete streets, so I could talk to them as well. Uh, but see about what the plan was for more of those. But I should mention that um, the city also just adopted a vision for um, a few of the intersections actually in Montpelier. So one of them was um, the the plan anyway is to put a street light at the corner of Barry and Main Street. Mm. Where's, okay, where's Barry and, what do you mean? So by oh. Shaw's, mm -hmm. where that flashing um, mm -hmm. yellow sign is, yes. we're gonna also probably put in a, well, probably the vision is to put in a, a street light there. And if I can make a suggestion. Sure. At night, um, you know, sometimes at night I have to wear a reflector mm -hmm. when I go out. But at night it would be good, because I understand that um, those lines, you know, the the street crosswalks mm -hmm. are not painted mm -hmm. over. You know, some of them fade. Yeah. So it would be good to have reflectors for people like, or reflecting paint maybe, mm -hmm. that can glow. So if you yeah. need to walk, 
you can see where you're going. Yeah, it seems like a great suggestion. Yeah. 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 I'll have to talk to Donna about that one. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, so going into the future of your campaign, yeah. um, what is your view uh, with the current situation and going forth um, about, let's say, the um, ADA committee, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about a little bit about that or anything else within your campaign? Sure. Uh, so, well, just to... Um, uh, talk about my campaign a little bit. I mean, I will be mm -hmm. probably officially announcing in November that I'm going to be running for mayor again. Um, but uh, but so but that is the plan. Um, so hoping to to be mayor again um, for another term. And that uh, you know just in terms of what your your question was about uh, the you know the thoughts about like ADA plans moving forward. Uh, so we just this last year within the last couple of months actually. Uh, got an ADA master plan for mm. the city, um, which is great. Now, of course, there is so much in there uh, that that's very expensive that we can't do it all at once. But like what, for example? I'm sorry. Like what, for example? Uh, what, well, give so, some examples. Well, sure. So actually, one of the things that I know is gonna. Um, uh, well, actually, I can think of a few things off the top of my head. Uh, for example, there are a number of municipal buildings that don't have um, access ramps. Um, for example, the wastewater um, or the water re resource recovery facility, for example, doesn't have a ramp. That that needs to change. Um, but there's uh, there's a, a whole wonderful list of things that that need to be done. Um, and it, an another one that I know is going to come up in the near future is uh, the rec building. So this the city just. Mm. Um, uh, decided to not build a new rec facility, but to rehabilitate the existing one. And so, what's when wrong we, with the existing one? That oh my goodness, so many things. There's, uh, well, I shouldn't say it like that. Um, there's, um, there's, it needs a lot of work. Um, it's a great building with great bones to it, and I think with uh, the right investment, uh, it could be just amazing. Hmm. Um, really, anyway, so uh, for example, I think there's some asbestos issues in there. Uh, mm. I would. I look forward to converting that building to a renewable heating source. Uh, there's um, there's not great uh, ADA access to that building, and that mm -hmm. I know is going to be a really important factor when we consider how to rehabilitate that building. Is how to make it fully mm -hmm. ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's one. Um, Will it ever be aspect. where everything? Because I know some restaurants are still not accessible within Montpelier. Right. I mean, I know we're supposed to be ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. um, do you think everything? I, I I know a little bit at a time. I understand. Yeah. But do you think will there will there ever be a time in Montpelier where everything will be accessible? Well, one hopes, mm -hmm. right? Of course, but uh, I think the answer to that is that it will. Uh, even if we're able to check off all the things on that list, undoubtedly there will be mm -hmm. um, there will continue to be challenges. Uh, like Where business owners up. won't won't uh, because you're 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 sectioning off. Like I'm not mentioning businesses. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> sure. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. But your your people with special needs deserve a right to go into a restaurant on a Saturday night and have a meal. Yeah. And if they can't get into a mm. or if they can't get into the restaurant because it's too narrow mm -hmm. or the, or they're having problems getting in, then it's lost of revenue yeah, for that's true. people. So just to be clear, the mm. city's master plan is tr is strictly for um, for municipal um, mm -hmm. infrastructure. So our I'm plan. Sorry. No, it's okay. I just want to make sure that you know I wasn't you know misleading or you know, anything. So um, the city's plan is is just for municipal buildings, uh, and so it's mm -hmm. you know that does not include things like making restaurants um, or other establishments. I don't think it's fair, AA. but yeah, no, that was fair. Yeah, that's that's a mm -hmm. that's a good observation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how do we um, encourage or incentivize um, buildings to, you know, when they do renovations, uh, potentially to to also mm. include ADA modifications as well? Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that there is some requirement that if you have a renovation of a certain size, that you they are a business may be required to um, put some of that towards ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But uh, I mean that that's a long time. But even so, um, even if all the the restaurants were um, ADA compliant, I mean we we were talking about the sidewalk cracks earlier. That is just going to be a continual. Um, Thing that like a perennial problem that we're going to need to keep our eyes on and make sure that we're funding properly in a way that mm -hmm. um, is able to address them. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. might find ourselves in a time like right now where you know we're probably a couple of weeks out. Actually, I think there was a frost warning recently, um, but it either it was recently or it's or it's not far along uh, where basically we we're not going to be doing any more um, you know sidewalk work generally speaking um, for over the winter. Um, and so, you know, over the winter, things will probably get worse, and then we'll try to fix it, um, you know, when the weather breaks, just because that's the climate we live in. But it, that will be a continual um, process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, anything else you want to mention before we? Yeah. No, I think that's it. Okay. Any more questions? No. Okay. Well, we'd like to thank you, um, Mayor Ann Watson and, and Teacher Ann Watson. For, <laughs> well, thank you. For you know. <laughs> I mean, you got to give a plug to Montpelier your high school. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this edition again for, oh, for um, Able to On Air. This puts an end to this edition of Able to On Air. And um, in a couple of weeks, we will be having a couple of guests from the Special Needs Alliance talking about uh, what if uh, you need a guardian or you need help with guardianship uh, when your loved one passes away. Um, that's on the next episode. Uh, we would like to thank and watch them again, and this puts an end to this edition of Able Then On Air. I'm Lauren Siler. I'm Arlen Siler. And thank you to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and Arla Israel. Thank you, and um, um, I'm Lauren Siler. I'm Arlen Siler. See you next time. Major support for Able to Learn Air, Green Mountain Support Services, to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits. And the OSEM Group, working to get better for you at any moment.